AG, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to have this discussion here today. We're at a place now um, in the GTU and Ministry of Education discussions uh, where there is some contention. How would you describe the state of negotiations uh, between the Guyana Teachers Union and the government of Guyana? Well, first of all, we need to backpedal a little so that we can put the current configuration into context. So, we had a ruling from the court which we disagree with and we said that we will appeal. We are still awaiting the written judgment from the court and time is running out. We will nevertheless proceed with our appeal in the absence of the written judgment. Now, in that judgment, the court found that the government acted unreasonably, that the strike action was justified, and that the government did not follow the required process and collective bargaining. These are findings with which we disagree, obviously, but those are the findings of a court. And until they are set aside, they remain binding findings of fact. Mm. Fast forward. In this instance, after the court ruling, the Ministry of Education invited the union to the table right. to resume collective bargaining. The union attended a first meeting. The Ministry of Education put forward the proposal that they are prepared to discuss a multi-year agreement beginning from 2024 onwards. The union countered that they are not prepared to do so. They are prepared to negotiate a 2019 to 2023 agreement. Right there, you have an impasse. One party want, wants a particular time frame. The other party wants a particular time frame. That's the definition of an impasse. This time around, the government went under the agreement for settlement of disputes between the Ministry of Education and the union and following the provisions of that agreement and the provisions of the Labour Act referred that impasse to conciliation right. and that is the contractual recourse by the contract entered into by the GTU and the Ministry and that is also consistent with the provisions of the Labour Act. And that is where the matter is. So the argument cannot arise this time around that the government did not comply with any process. The government scrupulously and studiously complied with the provisions of the contract and the provisions of the Labour Act. At the conciliation table now, the two parties have their difference in time frames. Mm -hmm. And that is what was referred to conciliation, this time by the Ministry of Education. Those negotiations that conciliation rather had commenced or has commenced and it would appear as though there is another impasse with rather than deal with that issue that narrow issue of what 
was referred to to be conciliated upon, which is which time frame, mm. the union has now superimposed a whole regime of demands which are not only premature, precipitous, and precipitous, but may not be even considered relevant. You have to agree first to resolve the impasse and negotiate around that particular impasse. What is the deadlock? 2019 to 2023 or 2024 onwards. Right. Rather than res rather than negotiate a breaking of that deadlock, the GTU has now put on the table as condition precedent a series of demands which they are saying that unless these demands are met, then we can't start the conciliation. Now, conciliation by its very nature and by law, both under the agreement and under the Labour Act, can only proceed upon the resumption to work. Mm. Conciliation can subsist during a strike. That's a established legal and industrial principle. So in order for the conciliation to even start, you have to go back to work. But the union has now imposed upon the conciliation a regime of demands which they are saying must be addressed before the conciliation even begins. Right. Now that is in bad faith. That is contrary to the principles of conciliation and may very well be unlawful. AG, I, w I want to directly reach and speak to these issues um, relating to the number of things that they're requesting. Before we get to that, the GTU is asking that the ministry consider a proposal from 2019 to 2023. And the ministry is saying here, we, ha we want to discuss a multi-year agreement from 2024. Why do you think this is, there is this um, hard, fast position by the GTU to stick with this 2019 to 2023 position? I believe that the position of the GTU has now been unmasked by their current demands. The GTU knows fully well that the government cannot go back and negotiate 2019 to 2020 for many reasons, all of which have been articulated by the government publicly. Mm. They know that. And some of them are. One, 2019 was a COVID period. We had the entire economy almost shut down. You had the teachers were not in the schools. Schools were closed. Other public sector employees were at work. The essential services employees, such as nurses, doctors, etc., were at work. Policemen, members of our discipline forces, public servants, were at work. They exposed themselves and their families to the perils of a deadly virus. The teachers were at home. They were not in a work environment. Governments across the globe 
cut salaries because of economic constraints. We did not do that in Guyana. In fact, during that period, during, during the COVID period and up to 2023, we increased salaries. The teachers benefited from those increases. They accepted them without objection. Those salaries were paid to all public sector employees, including teachers, as I said, who comparatively was put under the least stress in that they worked at home through the medium of technology and, and e-classrooms, etc. But they, were never, they never suffered a reduction in salaries. And during that entire period, they received a whole host of benefits, all of which they accepted. Not once raising an objection to say, well, what about our multi-year? They accepted, accepted, accepted. Then, so that's one set of issues. Mm -hmm. Then you have the other set of issues, which as a government, we have to ensure that there is equality of treatment as we are bound to do by Article 49 of the Constitution of our country. It protects every class of citizens against any form of discrimination whatsoever. To single out teachers as the only class of public sector employees and to confer upon them salary and wages increases to the exclusion of other public servants and other public sector employees would be discrimination against those employees and discrimination in favor of the teachers. That is completely unconstitutional and untenable. Mm -hmm. Then you have, therefore, you have to pay all. The question of affordability arises. A government is in charge of the financial affairs of a state. The government has at any given time, a competing demands, a competing demands for calls on the treasury. You can't give to all, so there is a balancing exercise. You operate within a budgetary cycle. We have already; those are financial years that have been spent, budgeted pa budgets passed, spent. Monies that were left back returned to the consolidated fund. Mm. You have 2024, a budget was approved. There was no retroactive monies for teachers in that budget. And as I said, the question of affordability, can you pay all the public servants, since you can pay one, retroactive increases? Dating back to 20, 2019. The government, a government must be entitled to say that we cannot afford this. Or if we do, then we have to stop some national project. We have to stop the Demerara Harbour Bridge. We have to stop the East Bank Highway. We have to <coughs> stop the gas to shore project. And I can point to so many other things. Something must give for there to be financial readjustments of resources to make available the money. And employers in any industrial disputes must be entitled to put forward their financial affordability when the question of salary increases arise. The government has done so. Yet the teachers are insisting. Now one would have thought that they could have gone to the table and, 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 and worked out for themselves, you know what, 2019 to 2023, okay, the government is saying we can't go there, 
But let's go and negotiate with them from 2024 onwards and put in an extra percentage that would have addressed their concerns for the 2019-2023 period. So let's assume that the government is going to say from 2024 onwards, 1%. Let us assume. You, you negotiate with the government to add a, a half percent to compensate you backwards. You're not getting that kind of proposal. You're not getting that kind of negotiation from the union at all. What the union is telling the workers is go on strike. You have a ruling which says that we cannot deduct your, they cannot deduct your money. Only yesterday you saw the CCJ overturn the decision of the guy in the Court of Appeal. I have very little doubt in my mind that that decision of Justice Kisun will be overturned by one court or another. Yeah. Now, when the government takes out the deduction now, what will the union do? It is exposing its members to all types of perils. But the mask, I think, fell off from the face of the union when it went to the table during this conciliation and superimposed a series of demands even before the conciliation starts. And in terms of salary, once at 20 percent across the board in yeah. yeah. Now, to me, the mask has come off. This union has illustrated, even to those who are in support of it, <clears throat> that they are not serious about conciliation. They are not serious about resolving any impasse. This industrial action is not a bona fide one. It is influenced by other considerations. This 20% demand for increase in salary, in my view, demonstrates that the teachers are simply being used as a tool for the prosecution of some other objective, nothing to do with their welfare and their interest. Because no government will pay 20%. I don't want to precipitate, mm -hmm. but I can't imagine that such a demand would ever be considered a reasonable demand in the circumstances. And we can deal with the others. Yeah, yeah. But I pluck that one out to tell you that the mask is off. It is not a real industrial dispute. Among these demands, AG, <coughs> is the request for the Minister of Labor, Joseph Hamilton, to be recused from all negotiations that are to happen between the government of Guyana and the, and the Guyana Teachers Union. What do you make of that? That is an objection that is grounded in pure ignorance. Joseph Hamilton, well, let me not say Joseph Hamilton, the Minister of Labor, is appointed by the Parliament to perform those functions. It is the Labor Act, the laws of Guyana, which say who is to perform the functions that Joseph Hamilton is currently performing. So it is not open to any party. The law says that. So I, you have to go and amend the act. We have to go to the parliament and amend the labor act to say that some other person 
is to perform that function. The government itself doesn't have a choice in the matter because the government must comply with the law. So I would not even waste time on that, but that again shows you a different picture of this union. You know, prior to now, the union may have enjoyed good faith and a lot of people could have, would have been sympathetic with the union. But having traveled this road and now see the mask finally coming off, they realize what this union is about. AG, among the other things, the, the GTU is asking that there is no victimization, no loss of service, um, no transfers and no demotions. No. <clears throat> the government will not have any great objection to those because our government does not victimize generally. We would not transfer as a method of victimization. One will not be demoted for exercising one's uh, freedom to strike. We don't do that as a matter of policy. So those are not matters that we will take umbrage with. What we believe stand out is the 20% increase as a condition precedent to go to conciliation. And I suppose when they, if they get through with that, then when they reach to the conciliation table itself, remember they have not reached there, they have not begun the conciliation, they will, now, they will then ask for 120%. I am saying to you that they have asked for 20% knowing that that is not, is not a demand that can reasonably be met and therefore they want to destabilize the school environment. They want to cause disorder in the country. They want to affect the lives of our children and the educational welfare of the state and that is how I view that action. Finally, AG. As Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, what do you see is necessary for the resolution of this impasse, as you've described it, between the GTU and the government of Ghana? I see that the parties have to follow the steps laid down in the law for the resolution of the dispute. And there are a number of procedures laid out. Conciliation is one of them. The process has begun. But both sides have to be willing to participate in the process. And both sides must be genuinely committed to a resolution of the dispute. Based upon the recent demands of the union, it is hard for anyone to come to the conclusion that their intention is a resolution of this dispute. Their demands militate against such a conclusion. AG, thank you so much for spending some time breaking down and discussing this matter. Thank you.